This baby isn't mommy's. It happened the day after I gave birth to my second child, a daughter. My four-year-old son, who possesses a mysterious ability, looked at the baby in my arms with a puzzled expression. Then he suddenly began to cry intensely. My little sister is going to be killed. As I hurried to calm my son down, I glanced to the side and saw. My husband, his face pale and trembling uncontrollably. What followed was the discovery of a shocking truth when we checked on the baby. I vowed to uncover the truth no matter what. It's almost time to pick up John. Looking at the clock and finishing my work, I stretched. My name is Amy, 36 years old. I work from home for a major advertising agency. I lived in a newly built, spacious house with my husband and four-year-old son. I met my husband Mark through a friend seven years ago and got married. He graduated from a prestigious university and worked as a pediatrician at a general hospital. He had a kind personality and was understanding of my work, a husband I was proud of. Shortly after our marriage, our son John was born. When John turned three, my wealthy in-laws built us a splendid house. I felt fortunate to have a kind doctor for a husband, an adorable son, and a house in the city. When John had just turned four, he suddenly pointed to my stomach and smiled. Mommy, there's a baby in your tummy. What? John? John just smiled cheerfully. Though I was bewildered, something came to mind, and I went to the hospital the next day. There, I was told by the doctor that I was in the early stages of pregnancy. I was genuinely happy about the news of my second child. When I got home, I told my son that I was pregnant. John, there's a baby in mommy's tummy. You were right. Yeah. It's a girl. I'm going to be a big brother. Even though it was too early to know the gender, my son insisted it was a sister. How did John know there was a baby? The baby said, I'm here. I had always thought my son might have a mysterious ability. Once, when we visited my parents' house, John looked at my father and cried. I see something hazy in Grandpa's chest. Shortly afterward, my father was diagnosed with an illness, but it was caught early and didn't turn into anything serious. Maybe John has some mysterious power. I told my husband Mark. He dismissed it as unrealistic and laughed it off, though. Anyway, the news of my second pregnancy was a cause for celebration. I informed Mark, who had come home late, about the pregnancy. Really? That's wonderful! We had a hard time conceiving, so this makes me very happy. Take care of yourself. As expected, my husband was overjoyed and hugged me tightly. At that time, Mark often worked overtime or night shifts and was rarely home in the evenings. And, Mark. This time, since John has preschool, I can't go back to my parents' house for the delivery. It would really help if you could take parental leave. Mark's face suddenly darkened. That's impossible. You know about my job, right? We're already short-staffed. I can't take parental leave. Isn't there any way? If you inform the hospital early, can't they manage somehow? Impossible is impossible. How about asking your mom to come after the delivery? All right. I'll talk to my mom. Mark adored John but due to his busy schedule, he left most of the childcare to me. Although it was tough for me since I was working as well, I managed to handle the housework and childcare every day. In the end, we decided that my mother would come to help after the birth of our second child. I felt a bit lonely because I wanted to raise the child together with Mark, 
but I understood his job as a doctor and didn't complain. After that, my pregnancy went smoothly without much morning sickness. When I was six months pregnant, there was a spring concert at John's preschool. Please try to get a day off and watch John on the concert day. I understand. I've already taken the day off and will definitely be there. My husband promised, but on the day of the concert, he called and said, I can't come because of an urgent job. I watched John alone and felt discontent towards Mark. After the concert, I brought John home and waited to confront Mark when he returned. Suddenly, John pointed at the TV screen. There's a lady who is friends with Daddy. What? The TV was showing a rerun of some variety show. On the screen was a beautiful celebrity, laughing loudly and clapping her hands. I thought John was just saying something random and didn't pay much attention. When John went to bed and Mark came home, I wanted to confront him about missing the concert, but he looked unusually pale. He seemed so strange that I decided not to press him. Maybe something serious had happened at work. After that, Mark seemed troubled, but he didn't share it with me. I assumed it was work-related and chose to quietly support him. As my due date approached, Mark was busy and couldn't take time off. Two days after the due date, I finally felt labor pains. I immediately contacted Mark to pick me up, but he didn't reply. Feeling disappointed, I called my mother, left John with her, and headed alone to the hospital where Mark worked. By the time I arrived, the labor was progressing, and I soon gave birth. Hearing the sweet first cry, I felt relieved. The midwife handed me the newborn baby. Your name is Emily. Thank you for being born safely. I noticed a small red birthmark on Emily's back. After handing Emily back to the midwife for further care, I returned to my room and fell into a deep sleep after the exhausting delivery. When I woke up, Mark was beside my bed, looking at me. Are you awake? I'm sorry I couldn't be here. You did great with the delivery. Hearing Mark's gentle voice, I felt relieved. At that moment, the midwife brought the baby. I'll bring John soon. He's excited to meet his sister. Mark left the room, and I smiled as I watched the sleeping baby. A while later, Mark brought John. John, you did well at home. Look, this is your sister, Emily. When I showed him the baby, John frowned. This baby isn't mommy's. What? As I was puzzled, John suddenly filled with tears and looked scared. My sister is going to be killed. He then started crying loudly. John, what's wrong? Come here. Even when I hugged him, he kept crying and repeating the same words. As I tried to calm him, I looked up at Mark and was startled. Mark's face had turned pale, and he was trembling. What's wrong, Mark? You look terrible. Mark, in a shaking voice, said, I have something to do, and left the room. Mark was acting strangely. And John's words, what is going on? Confused. I started to undress the baby to take care of her and was shocked. The red birthmark I saw after the delivery was not on this baby. After having my mother take John home, I immediately called the head nurse and requested a blood test for my daughter. The next day, the results came back, and the baby's blood type was AB. I am type O, and Mark is type A. It was a blood type that shouldn't have been possible. I was deeply disturbed by the results. This baby isn't mine. How could this happen? And where is my real daughter? 
I was convinced that Mark had something to do with this. I tried to call Mark immediately, but I was told by the staff that he wasn't at work and they didn't know where he was. To find the real Emily, I decided to consult the head nurse first. However, on my way to the nurse station, I saw something. The moment I saw it, I felt like I was struck by lightning, and at the same time, everything connected. Late that night, I was hiding in the shadows. Suddenly, I heard footsteps walking down the dark hallway. It was unmistakably Mark. He stopped in front of a certain hospital room door and placed his hand on the handle. That's not my room, I said. Mark jumped. Amy, what are you doing here? The nameplate on the door read Smith Kelly. It was the same name as the woman who appeared on the TV show the day of John's performance. Earlier that day, I had noticed this very nameplate. John had said, There's Daddy's friend on TV. He was right. Why are you trying to enter Ms. Smith's room? I asked. I have pediatric duties here. At this hour? I pressed. Mark clutched his head in frustration. Let's not make a scene in the hallway. Let's go inside the room. I said, leading the way into Kelly's room with my husband. Kelly, sitting up in bed, snapped. Who is this woman? A fan. Get her out of here. I am Mark's wife. Now, let me see the baby. I demanded, ignoring her outburst. I peeked into the crib next to Kelly and saw the baby with the familiar birthmark on its back. Don't touch my child! Kelly exclaimed. This baby is mine. Then Mark said, Come on, Amy, what are you talking about? And grabbed my arm. I shook him off and threw the blood test results onto the bed where Kelly was lying. The baby I have with me has a blood type that can't be ours. And this birthmark on the back. I saw it on my baby right after she was born. This baby is mine. As I spoke rapidly, Mark tried to placate me with a wry smile. Amy, you're mistaken. Baby's blood types can change, and the birthmark might be a coincidence. Calm down, you're just stressed after childbirth. We can settle this with a DNA test. I said lifting the baby and glaring at Mark. He turned pale. Why were you in her room in the first place, and at this hour? Explain yourself. I demanded. Kelly sighed and rolled her eyes. Oh well, the jig is up. You've been having an affair with my husband. I accused. Kelly admitted their relationship. They met at a party, and despite knowing he was married, she pursued him because he was a doctor. By the time she realized she was pregnant, it was too late to do anything but have the baby. When Kelly found out she was pregnant was around the time of John's performance. That was why Mark missed the performance and came home looking so distressed. Suppressing my rising anger, I asked. I know that you two were having an affair and that we were both pregnant around the same time. But why switch the babies? Only you, working in this hospital, could have done it. When I glared at Mark and said this, he exhaled and shrugged his shoulders. Kelly said she had no intention of raising the baby even if she gave birth. Kelly nodded as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Right now, I'm on a break, but I plan to return to my career as a celebrity soon. I don't want the public to know I had a child out of wedlock, and I don't even like kids. As a mother, I couldn't believe what Kelly was saying. Kelly didn't want to keep the baby and threatened to either abandon it or worse. I couldn't let that happen. 
but I also couldn't let you find out. But why switch the babies? I demanded angrily. Mark averted his eyes. Because Kelly is prettier, and I thought the baby would be, too. What? I also want a cute daughter. That's why I thought you should raise her. At that moment, I was silently seething with anger. Come on, Amy, I thought you could raise both. I'd make enough money to support you. Isn't that enough? Mark suggested. Kelly chimed in. Yes, that's a great idea. My child will undoubtedly be prettier. I was furious. Are you out of your minds? Switching babies for such a shallow reason? And you were going to dispose of my baby? You despicable people. Mark tried to calm me down, but I cut him off with a cold voice. Do you think you can get away with this? Using your position as a doctor? Mark smirked. Of course. I'm trusted here. I can cover this up. I wouldn't be so sure. I replied, glancing towards the door where the head nurse stood with a stern expression. Actually, I had told her the circumstances beforehand and asked her to secretly listen to our conversation. Dr. Mark, if you intentionally switched the babies, it's a serious offense, she said, causing Mark to panic. She declared, this must be reported. Mark paled further. This is a crime. You could be arrested, I said firmly. Mark and Kelly began to panic. Mark pleaded. Amy, please don't make this a big deal. Don't go to the police. I will never forgive you, and Kelly, you too. Kelly trembled as I continued. You who tried to make me raise your own child and mistreat Emily, are beneath contempt as a mother. No, as a human being. I work with media. Remember? I can ensure the public knows everything. Kelly panicked. No, please. If this gets out, I'll lose everything. I beg you. Both of them fell to their knees, begging for forgiveness. Never. We're getting divorced, Mark. And you both will pay for this. I stated firmly. Mark was taken away by the head nurse, and Kelly cried loudly in her bed. I left without looking back, carrying Emily back to my room. Later, DNA tests confirmed the baby swap. Mark faced no legal consequences but was disgraced. I divorced him, received $50,000 in alimony, and half of the child support up front. We agreed he'd pay $2,000 monthly for the rest. I leaked the story to the press. Kelly was ostracized and disappeared after paying alimony. Her baby was raised by Mark's parents, who disowned him. Mark now works in a remote hospital to support three children. I raise my two children alone, finding immense joy in their bond and playfulness. I strive to maintain this happiness. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.